Hi, this is Bob from Fast and Nature, and welcome to our field guide series. Today we're going to be shedding light on the misunderstood timber rattlesnake, also known as Crotalus hortus. With its infamous rattle and striking patterns, this snake is both feared and fascinating. Let's dive right into 10 facts you should know about this remarkable misunderstood reptile. First, I want to start with respect. The timber rattlesnake is a creature deserving of our respect, not fear. Known for their reserved demeanor, these snakes avoid confrontation unless provoked. They're the epitome of the phrase, live and let live, making their distinctive rattle a warning and not an invitation to attack. Remember, they'd much rather avoid humans altogether. You will hear over and over many snake myths throughout your life. People love to spread false information about animals that they know nothing about. It's an ignorance thing, and I would implore you to be curious and not judgmental. They aren't mean, they aren't aggressive, they are defensive. Remember, if they see you coming, you are a large mammal, and they are going to want to defend themselves thinking that you may eat them. They are a venomous serpent. They're equipped with potent venom and are efficient hunters. Their venom contains hemotoxins and neurotoxins, which help subdue prey quickly. While their bite can be dangerous, bites to humans are rare due to their reclusive nature and preference to warn rather than strike. As I said, their venom is neurotoxic and hemotoxic, meaning that it affects animals in both their nerve tissue and their blood, primarily their ability to clot and congeal. People have died from timber rattlesnake bites. Usually it's when they have an allergic reaction and that allergy also may lead to not being able to get anti-venom treatment at the hospital. Some people have been bit in religious ceremonies. Most people are bit trying to kill the animal. While these are not aggressive snakes and are a defensive animal, you cannot get complacent. They are a loaded gun. Just as recently as 2022, a world-renowned timber rattlesnake researcher, Marty Martin, died in his home after being bit by a captive snake. Marty studied rattlesnakes for over 70 years. As an 80-year-old man, he was traversing talus slopes still looking for these rattlesnakes. If you are bitten by a rattlesnake, you need to stay calm, try and slow down your heart rate as much as possible, and leave the bite wound lower than your heart. Do not elevate it, do not put a tourniquet on, and don't try and suck the venom out. Be as calm as possible, try to regulate your breathing, and get to a hospital as quickly as possible. Now that that's out of the way, let's move on to fact number three. If you haven't yet, go to fascinature.live and sign up with your email address for my newsletter. You'll get updates on new videos, blog posts, projects that I'm working on, conservation stories, all delivered to your email. You can unsubscribe at any time. Please consider signing up, fascinature.live. Confusing species. Timber rattlesnakes are often confused with other species like the non-venomous eastern rat snake or the non-venomous milk snake. With the rat snake, as juveniles, they do have a blotchy pattern that can be confused with a timber rattlesnake if you're not a wildlife nerd such as myself. Milk snakes, they also have blotchy pattern. Milk snakes are smooth scale though, not keeled, which gives the timber rattlesnakes a rough look. You also want to take into account that some snakes defense is to rattle their tail even though they don't possess a rattle. When that's in dry leaves or drier vegetation, that certainly can sound like a rattle. They can also be confused with a pygmy rattlesnake called a massasauga. The timber rattlesnake can be distinguished from the massasauga by a lack of a white facial line, the black tail forward of the rattle, and numerous small head scales. Fact number four, food and feeding. These snakes are crucial for ecosystem balance. They primarily feed on rodents, such as mice, rats, voles, and squirrels. Timber rattlesnakes are ambush predators using their excellent camouflage to blend into leaf litter before striking their unsuspecting prey. They'll use their heat sensing pits at the front of their nose to, to sense the mammal coming before striking. The mammal will run off probably not too far before succumbing to the venom and die. 
the snake will then use its sense of smell and Jacobson's organ to follow the chemical trail left by its prey, find it, and consume it. Fact number five, reproduction. Timber rattlesnakes have a very slow reproductive cycle. Females reproduce only once every two to three years, giving birth to live young in late summer. Around my area, it's usually the last half of August into the first week of September, depending on your elevation. Litter sizes typically range from five to 14, and the young are born fully venomous and independent, ready to fend for themselves from day one. Even though they are independent, the mom does tend to stick around for a while in what is debated as a mix of maternal protection and probably just resting up after giving birth. About 10 to 20 days, depending on the year and the weather cycle, she will then head back for the den. After the babies have their first shed, they will then follow her scent trail back to the den. Fact number six, field guide description. I'm just gonna read this word for word from paherbs.org. These are large sized, heavy bodied species. There are two distinct patterns in Pennsylvania, yellow phase and black phase. The head is large, flat and triangular in shape. The head is distinct and set off from the body by a narrow neck. Pupils are vertically elliptical, deep set pits between the eyes and nostrils. As you travel south, uh, we come across another timber rattlesnake, which we'll call a, a regional variant of canebrake rattlesnakes. These can be very light pink to light gray to almost white in coloration. The timber rattlesnake is extremely variable. Just remember that. You cannot count on colors or pattern alone with these guys. Fact number seven, distribution. Timber rattlesnakes inhabit forests and rocky outcrops across the eastern United States, from the northeast to the southern Appalachians and westward to Texas and Minnesota. They prefer areas with abundant prey and secluded dens for hibernation. Upland forests with rocky outcroppings, talus slopes, rock crevices, rock ledges with vegetation, mature forests with numerous fallen logs, young forests with predominant leaf litter cover. They will use all of these habitats. Down south, they will den in tree stumps or root systems, whereas up north, they like to communally den. I'm gonna take a quick break from the video to share with you my first children's book. If you have any four to 10 year olds in your life, it's called Frog Butts and Toad Warts. I wrote it with Jessica Lee Anderson. She was the main author on it. She's a renowned children's author of 75 books. These are all my photos in it. It's on Amazon. The soft cover is $10. The hard co copy is $20. I'll have the link in the description. Please consider supporting it because we need to foster this in our youth. We need to foster an interest in them with the world's maligned creatures, the cryptic, the, the unnoticed creatures. And we can do that through today's youth to keep conservation moving forward. Thank you and back to the video. Fact number eight, etymology. The name Crotalus horridus reflects its characteristics. Crotalus means rattle in Latin. In Greek, it means rattle or bell. And horridus roughly translates to rough or terrible, referencing its rugged appearance and feared reputation. Fact number nine, behavior. Despite their menacing look, timber rattlesnakes are surprisingly docile. In fact, I would say they are probably the most calm rattlesnake I've come across in general. They rely on their camouflage to remain unseen, only resorting to rattling and then finally striking when they feel threatened. If you startle it, it's probably just gonna run off or rattle. If you step on it, you could possibly be bitten. You really have to be making a big mistake to take a timber rattlesnake bite or just at an accident like stepping on it. Whenever you're in this sort of habitat that might have rattlesnakes, you just gotta be careful. Just watch where you're putting your feet and your hands and just be aware. Like I said, complacency can really get you into trouble. Finally, fact number 10, conservation. Timber rattlesnakes, they face challenges due to habitat destruction and human persecution. They're listed as threatened or endangered in several states. In my home state of Pennsylvania, they are a species of concern. Education and conservation efforts are vital to ensuring their survival and the ecological roles they play. 
even though they may be taken off of the endangered, threatened, or species of concern list in states, I feel like they need greater protection because of the human persecution. People will go out of their way to kill these animals, feeling like they are a big shot and they are doing something good for, who knows, for the for humankind. If you leave these snakes alone, they will leave you alone. But that's just not the way it works with a very naive and ignorant general human population. So, you know, try to educate, try to share the word and try to break some myths around these snakes. And uh, that, the more people you can touch, the better. By understanding and respecting timber rattlesnakes, we can coexist with these incredible creatures. Let's spread that awareness and appreciation for the wildlife that shares our world. Remember, we are in the world with these animals. If you've enjoyed this guide, like, subscribe, and join us for more wildlife wonders. And tell me in the comments, do you have any questions about timber rattlesnakes? Is there something you were hoping I would touch upon and didn't? Let me know down below and I'll make sure to get your questions answered. And remember, this is Bob Ferguson with Fascinator. Remember to step into the outdoors.